something really fun I'm going to show you this morning. I've been meaning to do this for quite some time. I am going to be painting my lampshades in the living room today. And I experimented with a little bit um, before. And you can see the beginnings of the results here. I painted all four sides. I didn't paint the other the in-between sides, but I got these nice kind of rectangular kind of cut off octagonal lampshades for this lamp that I just really love. And my vision for the living room is to do things in kind of peacock accent colors. I have these beautiful photographs from my father. He's a professional. But I have just the other one is just still plain basic white. And then I have another one over here next to Wookie um, that is plain white. And it's a different style. It came with the lamp. It's kind of a protect your clothing. I have on this it's actually kind of a nice top, but I got it at the thrift shop for like 50 cents or a dollar. Um, you know, something that I don't care about that much. And so if I get anything on it, it won't ruin it. But let me tell you, I'm going to be playing with India inks, colored India inks today. And I play with alcohol inks all the time. And those things are totally permanent. They will not wash out. There's nothing that can get them out. The reason, I mean, India ink is well known for being about as permanent as it gets. And alcohol inks are similar. Once they dry, they're... <laughs> They're in there for good. So, um, wear something old, protect your surfaces, wear gloves because it will stain your hands um, if you care about that. I mean, it's not toxic, I don't think. <laughs> I should check that, but I don't believe it is. But it, it will stain your hands, your fingernails, everything. So, that's number one step before you get involved in playing. The first thing you want to do is make sure that your lampshades aren't covered with webs or dust or anything like that. So I'm going to go and look over with my uh, vacuum. My, this brush attachment is nice and clean and uh, doesn't go with this vacuum, so I duct taped it on there. Anyway, so just. It's always a good idea to experiment a little bit first. Um, I've got Gator helping me. <laughs> so um, the first thing I tried was alcohol ink because I've been playing around with alcohol inks quite a bit um, on painting tiles and just um, painting non-pervious surfaces. I didn't have a lot of experience painting a porous surface like cloth. Um, so I started out with that, and if you aren't familiar, um, let's see if I can get this close enough to the camera, but this is alcohol ink, and it is an, it is an alcohol-based ink, and you thin it with 91% um, uh, isopropyl alcohol. This one is made by Ranger. There's other brands. Um, and so I started with that, and I was trying to come up with something that looked like a peacock feather. And let me tell you, this is what I ended up with. I had several different colors, green and blue and turquoise and purple. And if you leave it overnight, it continues to spread. While the fabric is wet, and even as it dries, the, the colors just start merging and blending and... Um, there was absolutely no control over the situation um, and I didn't really like that look. Um, I wanted a little bit more distinct lines. So I started researching and I found that there's this Dr. P.H. Martin's Bombay India inks and it comes in several different colors and then of course you can mix them. And while it's wet it is water soluble so um, you can actually um, wash your paint brushes and that sort of thing. Um, this one is turquoise. There's a lot of different colors, but when I started playing around with that, I used a spray bottle to get the, the fabric wet first, and then I painted with that. 
and it didn't disperse anywhere near as much. And then this is what it looks like when the fabric's dry. You actually can just uh, brush it on and it doesn't disperse at all. I didn't really want a sharp line, but um, I just found that the India ink work a whole lot better for this particular purpose. So that was my experiment. And then, of course, what I wanted to do for the living room was um, dark peacock colors. And so this was just a little trashy little old, it's got cracks on the inside. It's very old from a lamp in my bedroom. And I liked kind of the way it came out. Um, I sprayed and painted with the India ink. But then, let me tell you, once you get it on the lamp, this dark color doesn't let hardly any light through. It really darkened the room. And that's not at all what I want to do with my living room, especially at night, because my lamps are my only light source in the room at night. And um, making it that dim gets really kind of drab. So that is why I ended up going with a more watered down pastel for the India ink. Red, blue, turquoise, and teal. I wasn't exactly sure what the difference between turquoise and teal would be, but the teal is actually a little bit greener. And the turquoise is what you would expect. So, And then at the dollar store, I believe it was, I got these nice little containers that I mix with water. They're airtight and they come in a variety of sizes. Let me show you here. They got big ones and small ones and then some little teeny itty bitty ones. And um, they were very, very cheap and they're totally airtight. They just cap on. And so I mixed up a dilute solution of each of these colors so that it's not, you know, it's quite liquidy actually. Um, a lot more water. If you just use these colors then you end up with something like my bedroom lampshade which just ended up being way, way too dark uh, when you turn the light on. Get my gloves on here. And be ready to go. I have a little jar of water here. Rinse my brushes as an old towel to dab them off. So let's see. I have my old other lampshade here just so I can kind of use that as an example. I don't want them to look too drastically different, but I don't care that they look exactly the same because all four sides of that can actually be different. So let's see, what color should I start with? Um, I think I'll start with just basic blue. And let's see, this is the turquoise green. No, this is the turquoise. This is the teal. I don't want to spill them on the lamp. Other side. I didn't do that on the 
first one because I was thinking I might be white, but I don't want to be white. We'll do a little something here. Outside. Just like that. Okay, so I'm going to We just spray as we go. It doesn't dry too much because right now the weather is fairly damp. So. It's already dispersing a lot. It does that. It just continues until it's completely dry. So like I say, there isn't a whole lot of point in trying to control it because it just is not something you can really do a lot about. Just sort of leave some patches. I want some patches white because it lets the light through a lot better. So let's see, I guess I'll do some green, just the contrast. Now we can do a whole lot of green on the other one. Get all of that color out. I don't want to mix the colors in my jar. So it should still be pretty damp. Just sort of go maybe like leaves, you know. Oops, there we go. Drip. Catch that one before it gets runs away. some old piece of junk, you know, from a thrift shop or something that you don't care a whole lot about, just to play around with it first. Um, and then, you know, once you get the hang of it and you get the feel for what the inks do, then you can get into the whole real project. So there we are, we got the green. I think that's enough of that. So I'm going to go on to the turquoise now. I'm going to spray a little bit more just to make sure that the fabric is damp. gets in there. I'm not going to worry about it.
And you can see now that everything just blending together. You can't really know ahead of time exactly what's going to happen. You sort of have to just do blocks of color where you want it to be and hope for the best. <laughs> you can't like be a real perfect artist. Now if you're going to do the dry brushing, I imagine. So, I'm going to do a little bit of purple. Now I don't want to go hog wild on the purple. It's kind of an intense color. But I do have a watered down pretty good here. I kind of forgot about that. This stuff has been sitting here for a couple of months, so um, maybe I didn't shake it. I should probably shake it to make sure that it's dispersed. And I don't know if it settles or not, but that's okay. You know, I'd rather have it Purple can really kind of get out of control if you don't. fade out with the light and it's also um, water fast not that the light shade is going to come exposed to water but just so you know if you ever want to do anything like an umbrella or something like that you should be able to use this uh, on a similar kind of thing um, might be kind of fun to do an umbrella <laughs> now that I think about it kind of hard to find a white one but um, you know, if you can find a boring looking one somewhere, 
um, you could color it and do whatever you want. Make pretty flowers or, you know, ferns. This is the lampshade that I just painted today with the pastel colors and um, it also attenuates the light a little bit but not anywhere near as the dark pigmentation so I just love this lamp. This was really old. I polished it up some but look at the detail on this. It's got this dragon that wraps around. Belonged to a dear old family friend. It's brass and I just love this lamp to pieces. So that's why I wanted to get a decent shade. The shade on it was just about as old as the lamp <laughs> in bed. I was working on this round lamp shade and um, it is a completely different fabric from the ones with the eight sides. And you can probably see it's actually a, a woven like cotton or linen or something and the others are a more of a almost like a semi sheer drapery fabric you know it's very uh, silky and smooth and it's all synthetic this one actually feels like it might be a natural fiber and I was I went and did it and then overnight I didn't actually stop to photograph but I it, it just completely dissipated into one big blur so I went back barely got it wet at all and went back and um, did more of almost a dry brush with it um, and got a much happier result with the swoopy look to it but there's a couple of areas now, I don't like the looks of that. I, you know, it, the lampshade wasn't wet enough. And I did go back after it was dry. You know, it, you have to let it sit overnight because um, it completely continues to disperse for essentially hours until it's completely dry. This part here, I just went back and. Um, and thought, well, maybe India ink isn't that permanent. I can just spray it. But I sprayed it, and it's been sitting here for several minutes. I, I would say maybe half hour, 45 minutes. It's not dispersing. So the India ink actually is quite permanent. So now that it's, it's still damp, I'm going to go back and fill in these areas a little bit. Oh and after spraying it too uh, it kind of developed a water ring um, it wasn't that the ink actually spread but it, you could see where the spray was so I went and sprayed the whole shade again and I'm gonna go back with a brush now that the shade is damp and kind of swoop some colors in through these areas that I don't know, maybe you like that, but I don't. It looks like a mistake to me. I want something that will disperse through this area and make the whole thing kind of soft focus look. So I've got, I'm going to measure for the um, trim that I'm going to look online because my local sources are usually not very good in terms of braid. If I can't find anything, then I'll go out shopping. But anyway, so measure around with a seamstress's type tape measure. It's 29 inches and we'll want an extra overlap just in case 30 on the top. Inches and then on the bottom Exact, but it's better to have a little extra than not enough. So that looks like uh, 58 inches around the 
bottom. And then we want eight of these ribbings because there's two on each side. This is the one I haven't painted on the edge yet, but I will go ahead and do that. So I'm going to measure completely from the top to the bottom, even though um, we'll be cutting it shy. So it's one foot tall times eight. So we want um, 12 times eight. You guys probably already got that. 16, 96 inches. Then we add that up, and since we've got two of these identical lampshades, um, I will double that. And then I have the other one in the living room that's the round one, and I'm going to get one that's um, to measure that one as well. I want all of the trim to be the same um, for those. And I'm just going to get some nice gray that's probably a dark teal or turquoise color. Um, I'll just see what's available. I found a fabric store locally that actually had some trim that I liked, but only a tiny amount. Um, I did look on Etsy, Etsy and contacted one seller um, with a color that I thought was about right. It's really hard to tell online what the color is going to be. And I want this to be the right color, so I kind of wanted to see it in person. <clears throat> but I found some that I really like, and I so I asked the store if they could order me enough for all of my lamps. And they have somebody that comes in on Mondays. It's a small, local, privately owned store, so not a huge staff. So, yeah, they said they were going to check on Monday when the buyer comes in. So I'm putting this around the top of this little lamp that I did for the bedroom. It's just covered with fur. <laughs> I should probably vacuum the lamp, but anyway, so I'm just hot gluing it on here. Hopefully I've got, oh, no, it glue sticks out. I've got one more. Got to get some more glue sticks. Just stick that in the end there. If I can. There it goes. Alright. So, feed it in there. And just get a bead of it going around. By the ways. Press it on there. good to go. It's exactly the color I want for all of the lamps. In fact, I'm recovering a chair, an old rocking chair that belonged to a dear family friend and I was lucky enough to inherit it. Um, but it was just really, the upholstery was in bad shape and, and wood needs to be refinished also. So I've got all of the fabric taken off of that and I'm going to work on refinishing um, the wood. And then I, I have the fabric, I got it off of Etsy, but um, I just, I'm not sure I'm going to end up doing that myself. I might actually take it to an upholstery place. Because I don't have a pneumatic stapler. I have a hand stapler, and that might be okay, but it's really better to have one that will really get the staples down in deep. So I'm kind of just goobering this glue on the edge there so it won't unravel, but you can see. Glue sticking up there. Not too happy about I guess I can cut that off later. But anyway, that's the top. Then I'll do the bottom. 
I was thinking of getting fringe for the bottom just to be silly because it's in the bedroom, but I, I couldn't find the same color. It's really, I love this color. And they just, they had some like navy blue, but that wasn't really what I wanted. So just to wrap up, I wanted to say a few things about lamps in general, because I just happened to take a couple of old lamps to the Habitat for Humanity Restore today. They have a ton of lamps. That um, Some of them are nice and some of them are, you know, you know why they're there. <laughs> they're ugly as can be. But there was one, um, chandelier that somebody was looking at that had little cloth lampshades on it and you know I could tell it was somebody like me that they liked the chandelier but the lampshades were had seen better days and sometimes it's hard to look past um, a really ugly ratty looking lampshade and see the beauty of the lamp underneath that one with the dragon that I've got, um, I think the lampshade was about as old as the lamp, and it's got to be <laughs> probably a hundred years old. And it was just really unsightly. And the other thing that happens with lampshades is they're plastic like this, they tend to crack, and you know, with the heat of the old incandescent light bulbs. It's kind of rough on the lampshades, so. And they just get dirty, stained, yellowed with age. Um, but you don't have, to, you, you just take the lampshade off. You can buy a new lampshade. And, you know, like I'm doing here, you can make it your own. Just do whatever you want with it and, and um, really make the lamp into something that's very attractive. This particular lamp isn't anything special, but it'll be a lot nicer now that it's got a pretty lamp shape. We're just about all the way around. This little squeeze a little. Some people might go farther than I'm going with the glue in one squirt, but. I want to make sure it gets on there and pressed on nice and firm before the glue hardens. And there we are all the way around. I'm just doing a teensiest little overlap here, not hardly any at all. I don't want it to stick out. Lift this up a little and glue under and then glue on the end. So you just smear it on there, gob it on. This is going to be on the, you know, the seam goes on the back side of the lamp so nobody can see it, but you don't want it unraveling. And so, so there we are. I think that looks pretty good. Don't you think that looks pretty good? I mean, it was the ugliest old lampshade. It was just beige when it started out, you know, and it was old and it, and it is cracking on the inside, but oh well. I've got one of the LED bulbs in there now, so that won't continue. I wanted to show you the final product after I finished the uh, the three lamps that I did that were lighter. Um, give you a little tour. Here is all three of them. I, I am quite happy with them. I'll turn this one on. You can see what it looks like on. It looks much better than it did when it just had the white ribbing. <clears throat> and 
And this is this one on, and then I'll turn the light out and you can see what it looks like when it's just a little bit darker. The other one isn't plugged in. But that's it. I'm very happy with them. Um, I got the braid from a website called ribbons.com. I'll put a link down below. If you like this, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I've got a lot of things coming up. Thanks for watching.